Hello, welcome. Ula, Diadic, and bonjour. Welcome to Languages at Queen's. Today I'm going to talk you through what it's like to study languages with us here at Queen's University Belfast and hopefully provide you with some of the reasons why you might want to come and study with us. So I'm Dr Ashley Harris. I work primarily in the French department, um, but I work a lot with all of the languages um, across Queen's. So I can speak to you a bit about um, each language and what it's like in the languages department in general. So first of all, why come to Queen's? Queen's has a great reputation. It is a member of the Russell Group of 24 research intensive UK universities. There is prestige attached to coming to Queen's. We are ranked in the world's top 250 universities. So students from around the world want to come to Queen's. We're also ranked in the top 140 in the world for graduate prospects. That's linked to things like employability. So coming to Queen's helps your prospects as a graduate. Another reason why you might want to come and join us at Queen's is that Belfast has the lowest student rent in the UK. Belfast is a fun place to be, but also an inexpensive place to be as a student. Queen's has invested almost 700 million in infrastructure in the last 10 years. So we have some of the best facilities of any UK universities. So as you can see in the bottom left corner, for example, it's our library, the Maclay Library, full of resources of particular interest to you might be the language centre in which you can go and use language software to practice um, your French, your Spanish, your Portuguese, your Irish, whatever language you're doing. And you can see some of the other buildings like in the bottom right, that's our law building, but within that there are cafes and different social spaces that you're completely welcome to use too. So Queen's is an exciting place to be and a beautiful place to be actually as well. So why study languages at Queen's? First, I just want to start with this picture of one of our students, Jonathan. He's a former French beginner student and he also studies Spanish. Um, he comes from England, so he's come across from England partly because of the reputation of Queen's, but also because he wanted to try something new, go to a new place. Um, and he says that he knows he made the right decision to move here and he hasn't looked back. So why study languages? This is a bigger question. You know, why are languages important today? Well, a coalition of partners, which included the British Council, the British Academy, um, the Arts and Humanities Research Council, and the Association of School and College Leaders and University UK, gathered together to talk about languages and to talk about the value of learning languages today. And they said together that languages are important for the following reasons, for productivity, for trade and business, for literacy and skills, for community and social cohesion, for soft power, culture, diplomacy, for defence and national security, public services, health and well-being, cognitive capacity, social mobility and equality of opportunity. A vast array of important issues, global issues that are important to society and in which languages play a large role. If you're interested in any of those areas, there is a place for you in those areas, thanks to languages. For example, I can tell you that um, the future diplomats in the UK and Ireland are to be linguists, that both the UK and Ireland are seeking linguists to join the Foreign Office and the Department of Foreign Affairs. So why study languages? Again, it's partly about the skill set that you that you develop. So Yes, it's about the societal reasons that you might want to learn a language, but also because you gain skills from learning a language. So some of those skills are specifically language related. So you gain fluency in another language. Our students leave the course fluent in the language that they've chosen to study. You also gain experience in tasks like translation, learning how to convey ideas in different languages, understand concepts in different languages. You gain experience in report writing and analysis, creative writing and presentations, all skills that are used in any job you go into after university. So there are some other specifically employable skills, such as skills in diplomacy in negotiation and cultural awareness and communication. Again, any employer wants those skills. A lot of the skills gained are transferable. So you get practice in group work in project management. You gain independence. You gain an intercultural awareness that not every degree can provide you with and you you gain analytical and presentational skills. In addition to these skills that you will use in the workplace and in day to day life, 
You also gain an understanding of global society. So what is life like outside the UK and Ireland? What can we understand better about um, how the world works? So our courses don't just focus on the countries within, you know, within close reach. We're actually looking also at, you know, Latin America, at Quebec, um, at um, Francophone Africa. We're really trying to engage with global issues um, and understanding global society. So that can be touching on key issues like conflict, like urban development, social cohesion, gender relations, aid and development, international relations and the global health ch challenges. So all of those will come up in different shapes in a degree in languages to help you get a better understanding of them and to prepare you for life post university. Another key reason for why you would study languages is the employability side of things. I'll talk later about the types of jobs that our graduates go into, but I can tell you for now that Professor Sir David Canadine, the president of the British Academy, has said that languages are essential for employability, trade, business and the economy, security, diplomacy and soft power, research, social understanding and social cohesion. So again, all very employable skills. Employers are seeking languages graduates for those reasons. And then the CBI Pearson Education and Skills Report stated that mastering a language has always been impressive to employers. It shows tenacity and commitment, but can come in handy if they work with overseas clients. Now language skills are more sought after than ever. This is true. Many um, employers get in touch with us asking about our graduates. So seeking um, our graduates because of the skills they have, their awareness that they've gained, and sometimes specifically because they want to work with overseas clients. Some other reasons why you might want to study languages um, are the following, but specifically relating to why you'd want to study languages at Queen's. So for us, we work a lot with small group teaching. So we don't tend to do big lectures. It's much more about small groups, really getting to know each other, getting to know your peers and also getting to know staff. We understand that languages can be quite personal, quite subjective, and it's important to really engage one-on-one -on -one and in small groups in order to improve. Within that, you'll have native speaker contact. So you'll have staff who are non-native speakers, but who've become fluent over the years, but you'll also contact with those who've spoken the target language from birth. So you'll really get a chance to learn about the differences in accents, to really engage with um, native and non-native speakers. Um, we're really keen on pastoral care. We pay personal attention to students. So when you come and study with us, we make sure that you're looked after. We keep in close contact. We do send emails to check up on students if, you know, if there's been a period of absence. We're very keen to make sure that students are well. And if there is ever an issue of any kind, we work with the student to ensure that um, we support them and also signpost the the most helpful resources for the students. Um, languages at Queen's helps your employability. We have made a conscious effort to embed skills into our course. So it's yes, it's about learning the language, but also about gaining skills that you currently are likely not to have. So we make sure that work based skills are embedded throughout the program. And also we try and create a diverse degree. So you can tailor that degree to what your interests are. So if you're specifically interested in global politics, you can pick modules that match that. If you're interested in culture, you can pick modules that um, that work to that interest. And the same for history. You know, there's a wide range of things that you can choose to specialize in. So you don't need to do an entire degree focused on on you know one issue, especially if it's something you don't like or one media form. If it's something you're less interested in, you can really tailor to what you want to do and what you want to gain. <coughs> Languages as a whole receives high satisfaction from students in the National Student Survey. So at the um, end of a year, we ask students across um, the country how they find their year or their degree. And we always um, score a, um, a result of high satisfaction. So students do enjoy our degree. Other reasons why you might want to study with us are around things like the strong sense of community. We try and be supportive and friendly. Um, as you can see in this picture, that's a group of our students on their year abroad. That's them in Paris. And also in the left um, corner, you can just about see Dr. Stephen Wilson, one of our members of staff, who's gone out to see them on the year abroad to see how it's all going. So we are very much 
present for students. Um, there is a real sense of camaraderie between the students themselves. And part of that is the language society work that goes on. So if you come and study with us, you can join the French society, the Spanish and Portuguese society or the Irish society, um, as well as the bigger societies throughout university. Those societies are very active. They organize academic events, so they might help you revise or plan essays, but they'll also do social events. So they do film viewings, for example, games nights, pub quizzes and the annual formal. There are also frequent opportunities within this degree that are outside of um, the actual classes. So, for example, we might offer to take you to a foreign language film. We might take you to an exhibition at a museum. We might also invite you to do activities such as contributing to the languages newsletter or in joining a literary prize panel. So there is a lot of space for um, engagement and community outside of the classroom. In terms of course structure, this is something that you need to think about as an individual. What do you want to study and how do you want to study it? So we offer a variety of options of course structure and here are some of the main ones, some of the more common ones. So you can choose what plays to your strengths and your interests. So in terms of what you can do, you could choose to specialize in one language throughout your degree. So you might just study French for your whole degree or Spanish or Irish. Or you could decide to do a combination, choose two languages to focus on for your degree. So you might do French and Spanish as a combination, for example. You could also choose to combine one language with another subject. So you might decide that you want to do archaeology and Irish, or you might decide that you want to do English, history, international studies, politics or anthropology with any of the languages that we offer. You can also do liberal arts, for example, as part of that. So do make sure you have a good look at all of the options available online. Um, you can also do integrated degrees. And these are slightly different because with the integrated pathways, language will only be a third of the degree. So if you choose to do accountancy, economics, international business, with which you can do French, German, Mandarin, Portuguese or Spanish, law, geography, maths or physics, the language part will only be a third. Whereas with the other combinations, say English, language will constitute half of your degree. So you'll be doing the target language work, but also um, work on the target culture. So it depends how much, what part, what place you want to give to um, French, Spanish, Portuguese or Irish in your degree. If you want it to have a large part, I'd recommend that you specialise in one language or two languages or pick a language with another subject like um, politics. And if you're happier just having language as a smaller part, so a third of your degree, then the integrated degrees are interesting to you as well. So say accountancy plus Spanish. We do offer beginners courses that are increasingly popular. So you can study French, Portuguese or Spanish from scratch at Queen's. So with any of the pathways that I've just mentioned, so English plus French, for example, you could do English plus French as a beginner. Any of those pathways will work as a beginner course. So if you do choose to study as a beginner, whether it's French, Portuguese or Spanish, it's an excellent opportunity to learn a new language and understand another culture, like gain a completely new skill. And with that, you know, when the employers in the um, British Academy were talking about how important it is to show tenacity and commitment, this is a real example of that, that you can go from no language knowledge or, you know, very basic GCSE um, language knowledge to being fluent in the language within three or four years. It's a very impressive thing to do to, for employers. Um, if you do choose to do a beginner course, a lot of time and um, effort goes into these courses. They're frequent, frequent classes. We see you a lot to make sure that you're learning, to make sure that we're supporting you properly. And those classes tend to be quite fun. They're multimedia um, and they really are trying to introduce you to key things about the language and about the culture. So once you've done a year of the beginner course, after that, you're integrated into the rest of the cohort at level two. What that means is basically you do a year as a beginner and by the second year, you join the rest of, of the students who have maybe been, who've maybe got an A-level in the subject. You might think that sounds intimidating, but actually it goes very well for our students because we have, we've really dedicated the year to getting them ready for that. 
Um, and it tends to be a lovely sense of community between the beginners. And then once they join the level two students, they're joining a wider community. So it's usually, um, it usually goes really well and the students are very happy to have done it. Um, you might be nervous about what starting as a beginner might mean for your marks. I can tell you that our former beginner students finish often with first class honours and it's because it's fresh, it's because you know they've really engaged with the topic um, and they've shown commitment to it and often they just come to love it and that's that's what drives them, that's what motivates them. So if you have any interest in picking up something new or coming back to a language that you maybe did at GCSE, I would really recommend that you consider our beginner courses. In terms of what we study together, anyone who studies a language with us will take language modules. What do we do in these language modules? In reality, we do a range of things. It's not really a you know one type of class only. So in some of the classes, you'll be learning to do things like translation, summarizing, report writing, even negotiation, um, creative writing, analyzing, and pres presenting in written form and in spoken form. So we're really engaging with a wide range of activities. It's not really just, you know, only the grammar classes. There are a lot, are a lot of different things going on, a lot of different activities. So of course, we are seeking to give you advanced vocabulary. So we're trying to build your um, vocabulary set over the years and also to perfect your grammar. So obviously, if you've been doing a language for the last few years, you know how important grammar is. So really, we're just trying to consolidate your knowledge. And then, as I mentioned a little bit earlier, we do have dedicated classes around professional skills. So we are trying to make you as employable as possible. So we do CV writing with you, you know, not in English, but actually in other languages. Once you've done a CV in French, you'll find it so easy to do a CV in English. You'll get a chance at looking at business case studies, even legal case studies. Um, you'll do press briefings, so the type of thing that would be useful in journalism, in the civil service, in diplomacy, for example. And we teach you to understand the political context abroad. So what are the hot political issues in other countries? Uh, but we use small classes for our language modules, so we make sure that there aren't too many people in a class so that everybody feels comfortable speaking. And we make sure, as I said before, that you get contact with the native speakers. So in addition to your language modules, you can also do additional modules. So if you take lang a language as part of your degree, unless it's one of the integrated degrees where it's only a smaller portion, a third of your degree, for all the other pathways, you will do additional modules. And these modules are more based on culture. So culture, society, history um, in the target language. So, for example, some of the things that our experts work on with students are contemporary culture and society, cultures around the world, cinema, history, literature. So that can be fiction, it could be non-fiction, it could be poetry. We work on theatre, we work on linguistics, which is the study of language, how language works and how it works within society. You can work on mythology and folklore. You can work on subjects relating to spirituality. You can work on art and photography, you can work on gender issues, you can look into the political context through a module, and you can even start to get to grips with topics like medical humanities, so how um, subjects like languages can influence the medical world, and also environmental issues. So as you can see, the modules that we offer are really trying to engage with the wider world, trying to engage with things that are important for you to understand as a global citizen. As you'll have seen from that, we also engage with a wide range of media forms in all of those classes. So, so I'll give you an example of some of the modules that could come up in Irish. So these modules, so that you know, are delivered and assessed in the Irish language. So in addition to your intensive language tuition every week with an interactive syllabus, these are some of the other topics that you'll touch on. So you could be working on Irish folklore. You could work on Celtic mythology. You could work on Irish writing in the short story. You could be studying kings and warriors. You could also be looking at studies in Irish film. So we're not really a course that's just about literature. We really love to engage with film, art, photography. Other media are of great interest to us. So you can also look at language and identity in modern Irish literature. You can gain skills in Irish translation. 
you can study modern Irish poetry and you could also work towards doing a dissertation. So um, a bigger piece of writing where you choose a topic that you're interested in. So that's a sample of modules in Irish. Here is a sample of modules that are available in French. So in addition to our language modules, we offer modules such as linguistic variation in French. So what is French like in different countries and different parts of a country? Why are there differences? You can study French noir. So that's crime novel, crime film, etc. Um, Paris, City of Modernity, Myth and Biography in Recent French Fiction, The Exotic and Symbolist Art and Literature, Structure of Modern French, again a linguistics module, Caribbean Culture, so we're going beyond um, France, um, Ideologies of Death in Modern French Literature, so this is where we're touching upon things like medical humanities, what can languages tell us and culture tell us about um, how we see medicine, how we see um, death and illness. You can do francophone Chinese fiction, again, looking at the role of French and France abroad. Um, and also you can study taste and popular culture. So that's a selection with French. And here's a selection of modules that you could study in Spanish and Portuguese. So you might look at the world as stage. You might look at Brazilian digital cultures. So again, beyond Spain and Portugal, further afield, the fantastic in Latin America. Rogues and Mystics of the Spanish Golden Age, so we're looking more historically in that case. Inner Journeys, the Cultural Melting Pot, so looking at contemporary Lusophone identities. Rewriting Love in the Renaissance, again a historical module. Um, gender and Society in Contemporary Mexican Cinema. The Sacred Made Real, representing spirituality in Spain's Golden Age, and Disease and Society. So you can see that our range of modules really seek to go across a, um, an array of time periods, but also media forms. So really, you can tailor your degree, you choose the modules that are of interest to you to so that you're ending up with a degree that gives you the knowledge that you want to gain. So in terms of variety of modules, part of that is also variety of assessment. So we don't just do written exams, that is a part of what we do. But it's not the biggest part actually we do a lot of different assessment forms so there are essays that you can do you can do blogs you can be assessed on poetry that you've written you can um, write reports you can do digital editing you will do orals you can do interviews translations summaries and then also other projects for example we do have visual projects and textile projects and song projects so in one of our modules, you can work on creating a sort of textile mural um, as part of your assessment. So we do try and make sure there's variety in how you're learning and how you're being assessed. And we make sure that you're prepared for each assessment appropriately. In terms of facilities that are of interest to languages students specifically, we have the Maclean Library, as you can see pictured here. And within that, there's a language lab study room and that includes language software. So it's a dedicated space for languages students that you can go in and use and make use of all the software that we've um, included as part of your degree. Um, our classrooms are equipped for multimedia usage, and interactive teaching methods. So, you know, part of a class, a language class might be that we listen to a podcast and then discuss it or that we watch a video and then have a debate around the topics within it. So we do make sure that we use multimedia. You can also pick up additional languages in the language center. So there is a language center um, and at that you can choose other languages, even Arabic, Mandarin, Russian, etc. So if there is a language that you've wanted to really pick up or continue and um, that you've done previously, just look into the language center as well and see what's possible for you. So you know, maybe you want to study um, Spanish and English, but you'd like to do a night class in Arabic, that's possible. In terms of the support that we have available, QB is a very supportive community. For one, you'll have pastoral support. So that comes primarily in the form of a personal tutor. So a member of staff like myself will be there for you. They'll get in contact with you several times in the year just to check in and to have a meeting with you to see how you're doing. You are, of course, also welcome to contact other members of staff 
um, if you would like to ask um, queries specific to them. We have peer mentors, so students who look after students who provide support um, to other students. That's also available to you. We pay a lot of attention to mental health and well-being. So there are parts of the university that are specifically working on students' mental health and well-being. So if ever there's you know, a time in, in your life or a period of your time studying with us where you would really like extra support for that, that is available for you. Similarly, we have disability officers who also seek to support those with disabilities. We have hardship funds. So if for any reason you are finding um, it hard to make ends meet, you can contact the hardship fund and um, discuss financial aid. And there's a student union, a very well-established student union in Queens um, that's you know run by students for students. They're always interested in helping you. In terms of general community support, there are also many societies and clubs, like I mentioned, the languages societies, but there are also sports clubs and other interest clubs, you know, even games clubs um, and some of the like more extreme sports clubs exist as well. So you can really just get involved in whatever you're interested in. And we do offer library support. So how to use resources at university level and all sorts of training is available. So you know, how do I write an essay for university? How do I do a presentation? <coughs> How do I use Microsoft Excel? All of those are available as training sessions. In terms of a languages degree, a key part of it is your placement. So all undergraduate courses in languages include a compulsory residency in the target culture. So when you do your placement, you are so well supported. There's funding provided to you and there's pastoral support provided to any student who's going um, on a placement. So I'll tell you a little bit more about that. <coughs> so students who are studying French, Portuguese or Spanish will complete an academic year abroad. So that's typically from around September until May, June time. So as part of that, you can choose to study in another university. So maybe there's a university in Spain that you're very keen to go to or you can teach with the British Council, so to be paid to go to um, a school, say a primary school or secondary school in Portugal to teach English, or you can choose to work for an organisation or business that you're interested in. So the, those links are in a wide range of countries across the globe. So if you prefer to stay closer to home and go to France, Spain, Portugal, absolutely fine. But you could also go to a Caribbean island. You could also go to Latin America. There are a lot of possibilities. Um, and we work with you to get the best job or opportunity for you in the best place for you. If you study Irish, you'll spend up to six weeks residence in the Gaeltacht. So that course is in Donegal and it includes immersion with native with a native Irish speaking community. So we make sure that you're speaking Irish um, for that extended period. So complete immersion in the language. So with Irish, it doesn't need to be a whole academic year. It can just be those few weeks. In terms of support, I mentioned it slightly there, but we really do have a lot of support for, for those who go on the academic year placements. So the Spanish, French and Portuguese students are very well supported throughout the year. So we have dedicated staff members who will offer classes about the year abroad, who'll provide guidance, who'll provide support um, and anything really that's needed on the year abroad. So um, currently those members of staff are Dr. Ricky O'Rourke from Spanish, Dr. Tori Holmes from Portuguese and Dr. Dominique Chenereau um, in French, so in, yeah, in French department. So they are very much your contact points in preparing for the year abroad and providing you support for that. Um, as well as that, if you go abroad, your organization, your school or your university, whatever you're working with, will provide you additional support too. So there is funding available to you and there's guidance available to you from many sources. In terms of our research, so what we are experts in, we rank highly um, in the UK. So we are second in the UK for Iberian languages. We're second in the UK for French and we're second in the UK for Celtic studies. So that's according to the Times. And then in the Complete University Guide, we're first in the UK for Celtic studies, second in the UK for French and second in the UK for Iberian languages. So we do tend to score highly in the rankings. 
Our staff are world leading experts in many different areas, including linguistics, literature and visual arts. And we were ranked third in the UK for research intensity in the most recent research excellence framework. So the last time the research excellence framework met, we were ranked as third. So some of the examples of our expertise are in the following members of staff. So we have Isabel Torres, who's a professor of Spanish Golden Age Literary and Cultural Studies. So she was recently admitted to the British Academy, but is also elected to the Royal Spanish Academy and the Royal Irish Academy. We have Professor Janice Carruthers, who works in French linguistics. So she's the Leadership Fellow in Modern Languages with the Arts and Humanities Research Council. And she's the lead for the National Languages Strategy for the UK. So she, what she works on has impact on policy um, within the UK. And we also have Michal O'Manion, who's a professor of Irish studies, and he's the director of the Northern Ireland Place Name Project. And he's also part of the MIE, MEITS, an AHRC funded project on multilingualism. So we have experts in our staff that are excited to work with you and to teach you. In terms of how we're viewed by other universities, each year our modules and our assessment is reviewed by external examiners, so other professionals in other universities. And here are some of the things that they've said recently. So University College London, um, the staff there said that our methods of assessment are highly diverse and innovative, speaking to a culture of diversity and creativity of both staff and students that is admirable. Similarly, the University of Bristol stated that students attain not just the skills that are conventionally expected in modern language degrees, but a striking variety of presentational, creative and transferable skills due to the imaginative, imaginative forms of assessment. So we are well, um, well viewed by um, similar univers universities. And what do our students say? Well, here's an example um, from BA Spanish Portuguese, Sophie Hogan. And she says that she came into the Spanish and Portuguese pathway having no prior knowledge of Portuguese. So she was one of our beginners Portuguese students. She said that staff were always there to answer my questions, whether in class or online, and they helped me so much when it came to organising my year abroad. My year abroad in South America was the best year of my life. Queen's made university what it should be, the best educational experience of your life. So Sophie's obviously enjoyed the academic side, but also the placement and the community side of the degree. She's also a great example of someone who's begun as a beginner student in Portuguese and has left um, with fluency in the language. Similarly, here's Eilish who did a joint degree. She did English and French and she said that she chose a joint degree because I believe having a language as part of my degree will be invaluable to my career opportunities. So maybe you have an interest in another subject like English or history. A language with that can really boost your skills and boost your employability. You might be wondering what sort of careers you could get into after doing a languages degree. Here's some of the careers that our students have already gone into. So just some examples. You may go into advertising. You might go into banking and finance. You could go into broadcasting and journalism, civil and diplomatic service. So, you know, working for the government or working um, as a diplomat. You may go into community development. You might go into human resources international business, international sports and entertainment, marketing and PR, policy and research, publishing, teaching, translation and interpretation, or travel and tourism. So those are some of the areas that students, past students have gone to work in. So that this isn't a list that's, you know, the full list actually, there's more to that and really, the skills that you're gaining can see you go into a wide range of careers. Your skills will be valuable to any of those areas and beyond those. I'd like to share an experience now of one of our um, alumni. So James McMullen, who's an alumnus, um, he studied French and Spanish. And we've got a little video to show you about his time working in the sports and entertainment industry and what he learned from, um, from studying languages with us here at Queen's University Belfast. My name is James McMullen and I graduated from Queen's with a joint honours degree in French and Spanish in 2018. I joined the School of Modern Languages from a completely different degree course and found that the small class sizes, personal tutoring system 
uh, and close knit nature of the department were much better suited to me. People often ask me if I still use my languages degree now, and the truth is that I use it every single day. I now work in the sports and entertainment industry and work on some of the world's biggest sporting events, where not only is language proficiency itself invaluable, but even more so are the transferable skills that come hand in hand with a languages degree from Queen's. Over the course of my degree, I learned how to tailor my presentation skills to different audiences through both group and individual presentations. I learned the importance of attention to detail through translation work um, and literature studies. And I also became aware of the importance of cultural awareness in the working world through international business modules that I studied and the year abroad that I spent teaching English in Spain. All of these skills, as well as many, many others, gave me both the confidence and ability to follow my chosen career path. I would really recommend the Queen's School of Modern Languages because it has certainly worked out well for me. So that was our student James and as you heard he has had an exciting career since leaving and very much feels that his degree in modern languages prepared him for that. Um, as he says, he uses his degree every single day. So perhaps you might have thought that working in sports and en entertainment might mean needing to use language skills, but it can and it does. And James is an excellent example of someone who's put his skills into good use. Another uh, one of our alumni that I'd like to draw your attention to is Susie Highlands, who now works for ASGM Partners. So she works in advertising. So she says that her degree in French and Spanish has given her the soft skills needed to succeed in the advertising industry. She says, I'm always adapting my communication, whether talking to clients over the phone, de delivering a face-to-face -face presentation or pitching for a new business. I see my language skills in action every day in the workplace, whether I'm writing a radio script or deciding how a billboard should look. So as you can see, no matter what you go into, your language skills will be put to use, whether it's because you've gained skills in communication or, you know, you've gained analytical skills in looking at an, an advertisement and looking at a film and looking at a report. All of these, these things are put to use after your degree. Here is also another one of our alumni, Porg McGonagall. Um, who was was and is a Fulbright Scholar and is now the current director of Cotrilleran Ucanon. Um, so he says that the pinnacle of the academic year for Irish students is the annual trip to the Donegal Gale Talk. For almost a month, we were totally immersed in the language and given the privilege of using our linguistic skills to access Irish culture in all its facets through our native tongue. We got to know the local people, we became part of the community, and we acquired a deep understanding and appreciation of this beautiful place through song, poetry, and exploration. So as you can see, Porig really enjoyed um, all of the opportunities provided within the, the degree, especially the time spent in Donegal, where he was seeing everything he'd studied put into practice. In terms of our entry requirements, we ask for the BA, French, Irish, Spanish, or Spanish and Portuguese, that you have an ABB at A level. You can also enter with AS level language. If you're entering at AS level, that is only if the language hasn't been taken to A level. If you want to enter as a beginner in any of those languages, you can enter if you have a GCSE in the language, or if you don't have a GCSE in the language, you just need to show some evidence of linguistic ability in another language. So say you want to become a beginner in French, either you'll need to have a GCSE in French or have some experience with another language. So maybe you have um, grown up speaking Spanish at home or perhaps you did Spanish GCSE. Any, not any um, evidence of linguistic ability um, will be considered for your beginner's entrance. And finally, I just want to invite you to get in touch with us. If you have any questions, do get in touch by any of the email addresses that are listed below. Um, you can also use the chat box. So if you want to use the chat box function um, 
on this video, do feel free to ask any questions and we'll respond to you by email. Um, if you're interested in engaging with our social media, we have a Twitter, Facebook and Instagram account. So do please give us a follow and see what we're up to. We're always updating you on all of the, all of the events and opportunities that we're involved in. So thank you very much for listening and I hope you will send us a question. Um, do please get in touch and hopefully we'll see you soon.